Um, so this week what I'm decided we're going to look at is a new arrival from the attack wing range which we have covered in a blog post in the last few weeks uh, and it's going to be this which is the USS Prometheus. So what we've seen is uh, the Prometheus itself is actually a pretty basic model. Um, there's not a lot of detail on this. If you compare it to the Eagle Moss uh, piece, which was released a few months ago, there's a lot better detail. As you can see, the underside is very plain. There's a lot of very blocky paint scheming uh, on this model, particularly this black section across the back. These very, very bland and very blocky warp nacelles which are coloured and also the fact if you look at it it's not quite centralised this nacelle actually is a little bit higher than this nacelle or lower depending on which way you're holding this thing up so yeah as a model not the greatest piece of uh, plastic that the guys from WIDS kids have, have produced there's a nice bit, a little bit of detail on the top the warp nacelle uh, sitting on top of the hull is, is a different colour here as well so not fantastically brilliant but as we know from all of our attack wing models it's not all about the piece of plastic that you're playing with it's about the cards and the stats that you're getting along the way so we're just going to put this aside for one second so I'll put this over here and as you can see what we do actually get with this is the standard stand standard stand which you can of course pop on as us prometheus or if you want to flip it over and stick it on as a member of the Prometheus class, you can do that as well. All you're going to find is that you will lose uh, just one point off your shields. So as you can see on here, we've got uh, an offensive of five, a defense of one, a hull of four, and a hull of four in the Prometheus class. And if you flip it over, the only difference you're noticing if you use the USS Prometheus is that you actually get a five on your shield. So it makes it a pretty decent ship to be using. You're still getting... Uh, the evasive, target lock, scan and battle stations as your four standard um, Starfleet features with the Prometheus. So let's just pop that onto the stand. And we'll pop it as the USS Prometheus. And then pop the ship on as well. Just so we've got this ready in the corner. So let's just pop that there. Excellent. So, what do you get with the ship? It's the usual assortment of disabled shield, <laughs> disabled tokens, um, shield tokens, but there are a few extra bits. Particularly one is your range of captains for this one. So you do initially get your generic captain, which this time is uh, Captain Keo. As some of you may remember from the Season 2 Deep Space Nine episode, the Gem Hadar, he was the captain of the USS Odyssey. Why he's on a what would effectively be a Voyager um, expansion pack with the Prometheus, which was, of course, from Season 4 of Voyager, I have no idea, but he's your generic captain and he comes with actually no features whatsoever. The second captain you can choose from is, of course, the Doctor. So, um, a very interesting card here, we'll see this in a second, but he is again your second choice for a captain. And your third choice is the Romulan Rekar, who was the Romulan hijacker in Message in a Bottle. And he um, is your highest scoring captain. He is a Romulan as well, so we'll come to that in a second. But he comes up with a five, and he's your third choice of option with the captains. So what we've got on the Prometheus itself, on the card, as we can see, the stats are pretty, pretty decent. You are getting that five in attack, that one in defense, the four on the hull, and the five on the shields. You also get unusually six upgrade slots, which you can have on here. So you've got two tech, two weapons, and two crew. Again, with those four slots for your standard maneuver, standard actions. But notice that we've also got a 30 on the points. That's quite high. It's quite a high score, particularly if you're playing on a 40-point average per ship. I'd say you're looking at probably using this more with 50-point average games or having two ships, uh, which are of particularly lower scores, probably in the early 20s or even the late teens. So you may be looking at your birth class, maybe a standard constitution class uh, to, to be able to use this and maybe even those attack fighters. Maneuver as well. The great thing with the Prometheus is, and this is a great time to actually bring in the maneuver card as well, is that the Prometheus is one of the more maneuverable ships that you'll get in your Starfleet. So it goes up to a forward maneuver of six and a backward maneuver of one, which is the only red maneuver. So it's a very, very maneuverable ship that isn't going to cost you a lot of points and get you a lot of those auxiliary power tokens. Nice to see that you've got a full 90 degree turn available on the three maneuver. And though neither of those is a red, you're only getting green maneuvers on the twos and the ones. But nice thing is with this, that on the action card for the ship itself, 
if you get a if you performed a four maneuver this round you can immediately perform an additional one or two maneuver again showing just how maneuverable the prometheus class is so let's just drop those out of the way one of the things i do like about the the later wings of attack wing wave sorry is that the cardboard they've used is a lot thinner so it's great that now they just simply slot in i'm going to pop the the doctor in as my captain for this ship just to show you it's slotted in and it is a pretty nice fit as well so you're not getting a lot of buckle on the card there where you were getting in waves one and two where the card was a lot thicker and it was pushing out from the sides of the of the post so as you can see you've got a forward uh, and rear attack arcs on this ship as well which is great because we'll come to the menu the weaponry uh, in a second so i'm just going to pop uh, these two away and let's start having a look at those important captain cards so let's just pop the ship over to the side so the three cards that we've said we've got are initially we've got the um, alan oppenheimer who portrayed uh, captain keo so not really a lot we can say about that one but the two we can say a lot about are the recar card which is your romulan option and also the doctor who is your federation option the doctor doesn't really give you a lot of stats the, the the interesting thing here is that they really played to the strengths of the characters as they were in the episodes so if we're looking at the doctor um, he does give you an int uh, a t the option to increase your skill number on your captain but if you're not really fussed about that it's not a great option this may be one of those ships where you're picking a, a captain from another pack or potentially picking even the the generic captain which is popped in here raycar does allow you to um, add an extra attack dice for your secondary weapon, but you would have to immediately discard that upgrade once you've completed that attack. Possibly a good option to be used in one of your Romulan ships, although you can use this card in conjunction with uh, the Romulan Hijackers card, which is also part of this pack. So to be honest, the best captain within the pack here is going to be your Raycar card. The, the Doctor is okay, but he has only got a, a score saying of a 1, uh, which is only just slightly better than you get in with your generic federation card. So let's move the cards out of the way for the captain card and take a look at your crew upgrades. Well, initially, you actually do get an EMH Mark II card again, focusing more on the uh, message in a bottle episode. It again plays to that very much that episode. So the, the EMH Mark II isn't a fantastic upgrade. It can count as either a crew or a technical upgrade, but... Um, you are going to have to dis discard this card once you've used it uh, to target a ship at range one uh, and you're able to discard all the well disable all the crew upgrades on that ship probably something that's only going to help you maybe get through one or two extra rounds if you're using these options so this one is a lot better than the 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 doctor card as your captain but still not a great upgrade saying so it's only got a five as well as we can see on the card here uh, which means it's not a, a fantastic one Moving on, your only crew up, official crew upgrade for this ship is the Romulan Hijackers card. This is a particularly different card, um, which means you can have a Romulan captain and only Romulan captain and Romulan upgrades assigned to your ship. Um, and all of the non-Borg tech and weapon upgrades cost one SP at squadron point less. If it is... Um, assigned to a non-Romulan ship, you aren't going to pay any penalties. It's a great card this because this means for once that you'll actually be able to use non-Federation upgrades on a ship of your choice. It means you could also maybe put this onto a Klingon vessel if you, if you like your Romulan upgrades. If you like that Thaleron weapon from the Scimitar, for example, I'm not sure if that actually from memory is a, is a specific one, but say you want to use a weapon from one of your Romulan ships, a Warbird or the Valdor, for example, you might be able to then use this card and pop it onto a ship like the Prometheus, which would give you a lot of advantages seen as the Prometheus is quite a, a maneuverable vessel. Also, you might have spotted on there um, that if you aren't in range of any friendly ships, you do get to gain an attack dice, which is a great way uh, of increasing your attacking scores, meaning that you know potentially uh, the Prometheus, if we take that as the example, can become quite an offensive weapon um, against your opponents. Looking then towards the more technical upgrades, there are three options which come with the pack. So we're looking at tactical prototype, we've got regenerative shielding, and we have ablative hull armor. Tactical up prototype is okay um it means you can disable it to perform an evasive maneuver a scan or a battle stations action if you've got a primary token primary primary an auxiliary power token beside your ship um so it does offer a little bit of flexibility and means that you aren't 
going to be penalised too much for having any of those auxiliary power tokens, which can be a bit of a pain if you are having to use uh, red manoeuvres to get in and out of trouble during your attack wing game. Next up there is regenerative shielding. So regenerative shielding does mean that you're going to get a lot more life out of your ship. Again, it's costing four squadron points on here, but it does mean that you are going to be able to repair a shield token. It does mean also you're going to have to disable the card to do that, so you're going to be on and off this card quite a lot if you get taking a lot of damage uh, during the game. So pretty good card, one you'll probably want to keep um, with, a, with just the Prometheus, um, but not going to be looking to use it for anybody else because you'll have noticed there you are going to be costing, it's going to cost you eight squadron points if you do use it on any of the ship apart from the Prometheus, not just the Prometheus class. And then finally up we have the Ablative Hull Armour. Again, a great piece of defensive technology to put onto your ship. Uh, and again, can only be used on the Prometheus class. Does mean that it's gonna, you can add effectively three extra damage points before uh, you need to dis discard this card. As you can see from this, it does cost you that, in, that quite high seven squadron points. This is quite a big upgrade. If you think about this and you're playing a 40 point average game, your ship's gonna cost you 30 and then your upgrade for this is gonna cost you seven, which means you're left with very little to play with for a captain card or any further upgrades. But this does mean that you can take effectively another three points of a hit. So let's move on to the next piece on here, um, which is your weapons. So there are two weapons cards we're going to be looking at. First one is the standard photon torpedo. It seems to be virtually in every pack you're getting and specific for the ship that you are getting that pack with. So this one is fired from a Prometheus class ship, which means you can increase the attack dice by one so you're going to be looking at a six rather than a five and that's going to be taking place over ranges two to three which is pretty standard for uh photon torpedoes again nice thing with the prometheus class you are gaining that extra attack dice so you can use six in attack from your primary or rear facing arcs nice little bit of attack there but the big one that we're all kind of looking to see here uh, is the multi-vector assault mode um, so that actually comes in three parts so you get the multi-vector assault mode card which you can place with your ship during the game plus you get the multi-vector assault mode a reference card where well, hey exciting plus you get the lovely little token um, which is there to ensure your your enemies can actually see that you are in multi-vector assault mode so what's the big advantage of using this one? Well, it's the big feature of the pack. Uh, and with multi-vector assault mode, it means you can attack with that massive eight attack dice, but you can only attack within range one. So it's very, very close to your ship. Uh, it does also mean that your ship will only be able to move. Uh, I think it's, I uh, can't do anything with a speed greater than three, which is fine because that means you can still ship around. You can still do right you know, 90 degree moves and get away from your attackers, but you are going to be limited on your movement in this one. It is a disabling the card and spending a target lock uh, to perform the attack. Um, and you can't perform any free actions with this card, but it does give you that eight attack and it means you can also fire in a 360 degree arc. Nice fourth point you'll note on the on the reference card here is that you also uh, can choose to retain the multi-vector assault mode token at the end of each round. So that means that you can, as you are with cloaking, um, keep your ship effectively in its three separate sections as we saw during the episode uh, but that means you're still limited to that three movement uh, but you can still attack with those eight attack dice however i suspect that a lot of your enemies will have moved out of the range one which means that they'll already be three or, using a three or four movement piece to get away from you whereas you'll still be using the um, three to keep you moving the final piece you're looking at here is the mission, and this time it's hijacked, which uh, puts you in the position that you can play as the Prometheus plus a Romulan fleet initially uh, with two players, one player playing as Federation. What happens is that the Prometheus starts off the game captained by Raycar, as we saw, uh, and then moves on to be captained by the Doctor, assuming that the ship is being retoken, retaken actually during the game itself. So there we have it. Um, probably the strongest um, expansion pack in the Wave Six, in the Wave Fifteen um, pack from June this year. Um, model not so bad. Pack pretty good. Definitely one that a lot of players were wanting to have, especially due to that all-important 
multi-factor assault mode token.